Hi, Johanna. I've pretty much finished the coding, at least uh, the uh, first draft of it, and I've debugged it as much as I can. Um, there are no bugs as, that I know of, but you will probably encounter some situations where you find some bugs, and so part of your job is to let me know when it's not working as you think it should be working, as, as I've said it should be working, and let me know so that I can debug those situations. But it seems to be working pretty well. Like I say, I can't find any bugs at the moment. So what do we have here? Well, I've named this project Kinpo, and that's short for Kinetic Poetry. And so far, there's uh, one CSS file called kinpo.css. And there's some junk in here. I, I won't be sending that to you. And in the JavaScript folder, there's one circular dot J, uh, kinpo circular.js file. And this is where the guts of the math stuff is uh, coded. So this, this, this is all the JavaScript for accomplishing the circular motion. You don't need to edit this at all. In fact, you shouldn't edit this at all. But one thing that you should do is have a look at the documentation here because that describes the parameters that you'll be editing and changing. So that describes, say, the, the, the default values for the radius, the default values for the center and what those values can be, how they should be coded, and all that sort of thing. Um, and then there are these files. These, these are the things that you added along with. You can edit the kinpo.css file. Let's have a look at the kinpo.css. There's nothing in here that you, that you can't edit. Um, all I would say is that you can see that the, the divs, the W and X divs, have their position set as absolute. That's important because when the position of a div is absolute, then you can set left and top. So yeah, the elements that you want to move around, the HTML elements that you want to move around, divs or whatever, whatever else they happen to be, you should probably, in the CSS, set the position to absolute. Okay, and then we have these example files. There's these 16 example files that I've created for you to study and modify. So, you know, you can create copies of these and modify them for your own learning. Okay, well, let's look at the first one. What do we have in here? Well, um, First of all, I guess we should note that uh, this line links to this uh, kinpo.css style sheet. So it says, yeah, I'm going to use the styles that are coded in this file, this kinpo.css. All right. And it also says, and I'm going to use this JavaScript file, kinpocircular.js, that we looked at. And this is the path to it. It's js slash kinpocircular.js because it's in that js folder. Okay, so that's all in the head. In the body, the body is very simple in this example. All we have is one div right here. And let's have a look at this thing. Let's see what it does. I'll open it in the browser. And it's very simple. It just, it's a, that text moves in a circle. All right. Well, how do we get that to move in a circle? All right. Well, that's, here's the meat of the matter. When you edit these, you can, you can create your own divs, of course, giving them IDs, giving them unique IDs. When I say unique, I mean don't give two divs the same ID. You can so you can edit the, the divs that are that are in it. But at the bottom of the body, see here's the body, the bottom of the body. At the bottom of the body, we have this script, and this is what you edit to 
create the circular motion. And how do we do that? Well, in this first example, it's very simple. It's just three lines. The rest are comments. We create this configuration object. All this says is, okay, move element, move the div with ID W. And sure enough, this div has an ID of W. Move it in a circle. Okay. And then we have this line, which creates a code object, creates a new code object based on the code in um, you know, the JavaScript file, the Kinpo circular.js file. So it creates a code object, which I've named quite arbitrarily circle one. The configuration for that circle is coded in P which I've fed to the creation process. And then this line starts the motion. So that's the basic process. You create the configuration object. You create the circle and feed it the configuration object. And then you start the motion of the circle. Okay, well, we'll see we can do all sorts of other things like stop it and set the radius and the speed of it and the center of it and all sorts of other things as well. But this is the simplest possible example right here. All right, let's have a look at the second example. First, let's see it in a browser, see what it does. Okay, so we've got two circles now. Let me restart that so we can see it again. We've got two things moving in circles. And one of them moves for a little while and it stops. And then the other one just keeps on going. Okay, so that's the example. So part of this example is is that you, know, you can have as many circles as you like. Uh, you can have as many divs running in as many circles as you like, you know, one circle per div sort of thing. All right, so how do we do that? This div is, uh, has an ID of W, this div has an ID of X. So first of all, we're going to deal with W, so we, like we did last time, we just say, okay, well, going to move W in a circle, and then we create the circle, and we feed it the P object, and then we start it. So that starts this, the, this, that starts the circle with this text in it. So this is going to uh, revolve forever, because we don't say how many revolutions it should revolve for, and the default is if you don't say how many revolutions it's going to revolve for, then it revolves forever. Okay, but now we've got a second circle that's coded here. And in this configuration, we say revolutions is set to one. So it's just going to revolve for one revolution. That's going to stop. Now, this thing right here is actually in JavaScript, an object. You've heard of object-oriented programming, and you've probably heard of objects in programming. Well, this is an object. And in JavaScript, the way to code an object is, is something between these curly brackets. And the stuff between, you, you have a property, and then a colon, and then the value of that property. And then the property value pairs are separated by commas. So we've got a comma. And then we've got another property. This says how many revolutions it's going to travel. And then we've got the value of one. This can have one or 1 1.5 or, you know, it's a positive number, can be a fraction. And then I've named it something different than circle one which is good. You, if you want this circle to be different from this circle, it's got to have a different name. This is circle two. 
and you can see I've fed it Q, not P. And then I've said circle two start, so this starts circle two. And so let's have a look at the result again. So we've got these two circles. One keeps going and one doesn't. All right, so that's the second example. Let's have a look at the third example. What's going on with this? Let's open it up in a browser. Okay, well this example shows you a little bit about how you can configure the center of a circle. If you don't specify the center of a circle, then it defaults to the center of the browser. But in this example, we're, we're actually going to code the center. And you can see that the center is coded in this uh, configuration object again. And we've, we've coded it in this array. Things between these sorts of brackets are called arrays. And an array can have any number of values inside of it. An array is about an ordered list of things. And in this case, we've got two things. We've got 30% and 30%. This says the X component of the center of the circle is 30% uh, of the width of the browser. And this says that the Y component of the center of the circle is 30% of the height of the browser. And in the Cartesian coordinate system in browsers, the origin, you, you'll recall Cartesian coordinate systems, which you've been dealing with in CSS anyway, so you're probably all familiar with this. But in browsers, the Cartesian coordinate system the zero, zero point is at the top left. Um, so, yeah, just a little shift rather than the, you know, the, the Cartesian coordinate system that you'll remember from math. The origin is, is not at top left, but it is in a, in a computer system. No big deal. So, all right. We've said that the center is is there, and then I've specified the size of the radius is 40 pixels. The, the size of, of the radius is always specified in pixels, and theta increment is five. Um, what is theta increment? Well, theta increment is the number of degrees specified in degrees, not radians. It's the number of degrees through which the circle turns each time it is moved. So basically this is the speed, or this is one of the measures of the speed of the circular motion. If you want to make the motion finer and slower, you can decrease that. If you want to make it faster and jerkier, then, then you increase that. I mean, say we say we increase this to oh, 90 degrees. Well, let's see what that looks like. <laughs> so that's changing 90 degrees each time. Now let's change it down to oh, 2 degrees. That's a lot smaller than I think we had what? five to begin with. So let's see what it looks like with five. So you can see that it's slower and it's more continuous. It's, yeah. Okay, so so the center can be specified either as an absolute value, like you could have, you know, a hundred, comma, two hundred, or you can specify the center in these in these um, relative terms, in terms of percent of the browser width and the browser height. However, if you're going to specify absolute values, like let's say make this um, 0.5%, 
zero comma zero then you don't include quotation marks around the values say when I had the percentage I had to include quotation marks around the center values but this way you don't include the if you're gonna have an absolute center values and no quotation marks so let's see what uh, let's see what this looks like yeah so you can see that the center is now at the origin at zero zero okay so let me put that back to what it was 30 percent comma 30 percent yeah 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 okay radius 43 increment and I had it originally at 8 yeah okay